Hey guys, so welcome back. We are going to pick up where we last left off, a mail order soulmate. So let's get started. A sack pulled up beside the home where John was celebrating a birthday that surely numbered well into the 60s. He let a sigh and rubbed his eyes. What Grant had said about the lawyer's birthday being last month seemed accurate. Was this a belated celebration? Something fed off, especially with Grant giving them such a hasty goodbye, but he couldn't quite put his finger on it. He used to be good at suiting out the reasons why stuff didn't add up. You're not a social animal, are you? Catherine asked. It's going to be a zoo. A zoo. We don't have to go in. Excuse me. He appreciated the offer, but she'd been right earlier in suggesting it was best to go. It was best to get the curiosity over with so they wouldn't be bombarded throughout the coming weeks. Maybe then he could get to the bottom of why she danced away whenever they seemed to connect. All right. Because she was a widow who wasn't looking for love or anything beyond companionship. Like the goof he was in the car he'd all been... Like the goof he was in the car he'd all... But leaned in, eyes closed, lips perched. Even thought she made it abruptly clear she wasn't interested. Do we have a story, he asked thinking ahead to the party and the line of questioning that was surely in short and soon. Oh, like a cover? She wiggled in her seat, enthused by the idea. Yeah, sure. The truth was, the undocked arrangement was a tad embarrassing and he hoped to steer clear of any conversations that involved how they met or what had caused them to keep the to take the leap with a stranger. The good thing was that guys rarely asked these kinds of questions, and nobody but Logan knew that he married her and forgotten about doing so. What should it be, Catherine asked. We met online? She gave him a blank look, and he glimpsed. This was his thing, thinking on his feet and coming up with good cover stories. So why couldn't he? Because he'd been lying to people he cared about. He cared about the people of Blueberry Springs. When had that happened? A chill ripped all over his flesh, and his old commander's advice echoed in his ears. Don't get involved. You only put yourself and others at risk. And Helen slowly sat and clenched his hands, reminding himself that there was no risk. Not any longer. He was doing the real world thing now. No more dangerous cases, no more big secrets. Just a woman with an infant who travels the world to come live with him because she was in mourning and wasn't in contact with her family by choice. That was a lame cover story. And after 40, after 24 hours together, he should have more on her than that. And Catherine prompt, maybe it's easier to tell the truth, he offered, although not all of it. He wanted to see him as the regular guy, not someone to fear, someone with secrets or a past that would surely make her uncomfortable around him. The truth, she said, her voice hollow. They were silent for a moment, and a burst of laughter f- fl- filtered into the car from the house they were parked outside of. It was going to be loud and warm in there. Maybe it would be too much for Savior, and they could leave early. Maybe not the truth, he answered thinking to himself, and the things he never planned to speak of, the stories he hoped Catherine would never ask him to tell. Everyone's going to want to know why I come over here. True love, Zach said, a hint of irony in his tone. And where Savior's father is, a tone of vulnerability had crept into her voice, and Zach reached for the keys to start the engine. Catherine held out a hand to stop him. Simon passed away when I was pregnant. I was alone. And so I came here hoping for a fresh start and to give Savior a family. That's the truth. She was so filled with sorrow that Sack did what he hadn't dared yet to do, and he reached out to gently touch her cheek. I'm sorry about Simon. A tear, a tear fell from her eye, and she quickly wiped at it. I'm fine. I know you are. You're very strong, you know that. Catherine gave a huff of disbelief that sounded as if it came from a gut twisted with grief and remorse. Maybe her cover story was just what she said it was, and nothing more. He was so out of practice in dealing with genuine human emotion 
that he had assumed there had to be more as a driver for her. Just grief pushing her to take the risk and come to Blueberry Springs. He knew that when it came to doing the unthinkable, there was nothing bigger than emotion as the reason behind it. Even though you're strong, it's okay to lean on me. He would be here for her, wouldn't he? He could make promises he never used to be able to make for fear of suddenly having to vanish. I marry that you want the best for Savior and that you're willing to take a risk, risk to find that for him. Unsure what she was thinking and what he should say to her. What he should say to let her know that she could let in her guard, he added. I can't give you everything, but maybe. I don't want everything. I'm just looking for an honest, normal life. Me too, he mumbled. Me too. And never in his life had he wanted it more.